Eva is already singing. Eva, let's begin. In the Patris et Filii, the Spirit of Sancti. Amen. Veni Sancti Spiritus repletuorum corda fidelium et tui amoris in eis inim accende. Emite Spiritum tuum et crea buntu. Et crea babis Oremus Deus, qui corda fidelium Sancti Spiritus illustratione da cuisti, da nobis in iodem spiritu recta sapere, et eius semper consolazione gaudere per Christum Dominum nostrum. Amen. Okay. Today we're going to comment on the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 6, verses 53 to 56. Today is February 8, 2021. Welcome to our Gospel Commentaries. This is the uh, Kleachko household, and I'm Jake Kleachko. I am dad to my seven children. Hey, we do this every day, um, as much as it's practicable. Um, do the gospel commentaries, helping my own children understand the meaning of the gospel. So, gospel of the day's mass. So, I encourage everybody to do your own daily gospel reading, and um, you know, for parents to help your own children understand the message of the gospel every day. And that's what we try and do here at our own home. So I invite you to listen and to uh, participate and, um, you know, maybe show this, this video to your own children as well. Okay, so we'll read the Gospel of St. Mark for today's Mass. After making the crossing to the other side of the sea, Jesus and his disciples came to land at Gennesaret and tied up there. And they were leaving the boat. People immediately recognized him. They scurried about the surrounding country and began to bring in the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. Whatever villages or towns or countryside he entered, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch only the tassel of his cloak. And as many as touched it were healed. So here we have a story of Jesus visiting Gennesaret. Right? Uh, last week, we, we saw how he sent his uh, disciples two by two to go to different towns. To do what? Well, to heal the sick. Right? And so now, the fame of Jesus has spread, as we were talking about also last week. Jesus has become famous all over Israel among different towns of the Jews. And he must have been known as the great miracle worker, the one who heals the sick, right? And that is why everywhere he went, it looks like the first instinct of these people was to gather everybody sick in the town and lay them at the feet of Jesus because that was what they were hearing. Everywhere Jesus was going, he was healing the sick and in fact this is the kind of proof that he he told the disciples of john saint john the baptist right when he sent his disciples to inquire whether that jesus was the messiah um, not because saint john the baptist doubted right in fact he was the first one to proclaim behold the lamb of god but he wanted his disciples to hear it from the horse's mouth so to speak so he sent uh, his disciples to Jesus to inquire whether he was the Messiah. And what did Jesus tell him or tell his disciples? Well, what did you go out to see? Tell John what you saw, right? What did you see? The lame walk, the blind see, the lepers are cleansed, uh, the deaf hear, and the dead raised, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. So, Jesus was confirming that, yes, this is what I do. And you can tell John that this is what you witnessed as a way to confirm for him that indeed I am the Messiah that everybody has been expecting all these centuries. Okay? So, this is how Jesus was known. He was, among many other things, 
and maybe in, 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 a, in a more superficial way, he was known as the miracle worker. And that is why that's what everybody expected um, from him. Even Herod identified him to be that, right? Oh, he, he, he must be uh, uh, John who I beheaded. He was raised up. That's why he can do these marvelous things. So everything seemed to be associated with miracles that Jesus was performing. Now, of course, uh, there was reason for Jesus to be performing miracles. Uh, and one of those was because it was a way to confirm the faith of people in him. Okay? It was a way to confirm the faith of, our, of, of the people. The question is, is, is the era of miracles over? We don't seem to be hearing much about it anymore these days, right? We don't seem to be hearing about uh, uh, people who get uh, instant cures just because they asked Jesus and prayed for these miracles. Well, even if we don't hear much of these miracles uh, in our own day and age, I can assure you that miracles still do happen, right? Miracles of many types, including those of a physical nature. That is why we pray for, for friends and relatives uh, who might be going through some physical uh, challenges, and we pray that they get healed. Some of these uh, sicknesses really require miracles. And, well, uh, we do pray with faith. If it is the will of God to cure them, then we hope that God cures them. Right? We have the experience ourselves with uh, your own grandmother, Grandma Aleli, right? who was stricken with cancer for seven years. And within those seven years, got cured three times from her cancer. Uh, of course, it recurred, it recurred, but doctors declared her miraculously cured three times. So, you know, we experience that kind of uh, uh, miraculous cure, and uh, there are plenty of those still going around. But... You know what? That's not the only kind of miracle that Jesus performs for us. Every day of our lives, Jesus can and does perform miracles. Many times, they are miracles for our souls. They are miracles of a spiritual kind. They are cures for whatever ails our soul. And what are those things that ail our soul, that make us sick in the soul? Number one is sin, of course. Right? Sin. In fact, in fact, uh, if you recall the, uh, the parable, not the parable, the true story of the paralytic who was cured, right, by our Lord. What, what did our Lord first tell him before curing his paralysis? Eh? He said, your sins are forgiven. And then the Jews around him were scandalized. Well, who is this? Who, why does he talk about forgiving sins? Right? Can God, God is the only one who can forgive sins. But Jesus tells them, well, uh, so that you know that the Son of Man has the power on earth to forgive sins, then I will also perform another, another miracle besides curing the soul of this person. I will make him walk. Right? But you see how our Lord paid attention first and foremost to the ailment of the soul. As though emphasizing for us that between these kinds of cures, uh, priority has to be given to uh, uh, healing of the soul, of things that ail uh, the soul, ailments of the soul of a spiritual nature, which are basically caused by sin. Okay? Our own broken human nature was caused by original sin, original sin which we inherited from our first parents, which of course gets cleansed through baptism. But the stain of sin remains in our souls, meaning the tendency of sinning remains in our souls. And that's why he gave us a sacrament of confession, so that we can ask forgiveness from our sins. But we need to continually pray, pray to our Lord and ask for, 
for healing for all of the struggles and difficulties that we encounter spiritually. Okay. Oh, oh. <laughs> your cooking toys start talking now. Okay. So, let us ask Jesus to carry our burdens for us, to heal us from whatever besets our souls, right? All our worries, all our shortcomings, all our sinfulness, all of our bad tendencies, our challenges in virtue, the vices we want to get, we want to rid ourselves of and we struggle against. These are the infirmities that Jesus can heal for us every day if we only sincerely ask for his grace to do so okay you see we cannot we cannot live virtuous lives we cannot even live our faith very well just by our own brute strength we need grace we need grace and we need to pray for that grace we need to ask jesus every day to help us grow in faith remember how he heals people he always says in the end your faith has saved you your faith has healed you okay? so we have to believe we have to have faith we have to trust that Jesus can heal the ailments of our soul but we need to ask we need to pray for it sincerely okay? and that is the way that he sends us that miracle for the soul every day now we are approaching Lent. We are one week away from Lent. Okay? It's coming. A good uh, 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 time and season of the year in our liturgical calendar to really, really focus on the healing of the soul. Okay? Where we can ask our Lord for uh, forgiveness from our sins and really examine ourselves and find out, you know, what are those ailments of the soul that we can uh, ask for healing for. And as we approach Lent, let's start examining our consciences deeper and deeper and deeper so that by the beginning of Lent next week, we'll hit the road running, okay? We'll hit the road running with our penances, with our uh, 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 resolutions of making up for our sinful tendencies and our sins and accommodate the grace, the miracle of healing that we can start praying for from our Lord starting today okay, and every day of our lives. Okay, that's it for us, folks. Have a good day, everybody. We'll see you again tomorrow, same time, hopefully, in the morning. Okay? Eva, you have anything to say? Come, 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 come. Come. Oh, you don't like to come here? Come. No. <laughs> no, no, she doesn't like. Okay, okay, she doesn't like. Let's just say bye-bye. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye, bye -bye. Bye -bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs> okay, she's not in the mood today. Okay, bye-bye. We'll see you again. Bye.